Hello again. So today's question is quite topical. It's what do you think of Extinction Rebellion and is it the right approach? Well, it's certainly in the news. Something that we can certainly say about the movement is that it's got um, us paying attention. It's got governments paying attention. It's been in the media. It's um, basically put a big roadblock, literally, in the middle of London and uh, got people thinking about things, whether they get annoyed or not about it. And so it's important to be aware of when we're looking at things like permaculture, we often think of permaculture as being about gardening and growing food and that kind of thing for ourselves. But when we're trying to change a system like um, the world as it currently is, to improve it, to fix the things that we've been messing up, um, we have to work on different levels. So in the same way that if I'm growing things in my garden, I'm thinking about irrigation, I don't just think about how much water I need in my water tank. I think the water tank is going to be basically is for irrigating the plants in the garden. So how can I reduce the need of the plants in my garden so I don't need such a big tank? Because, of course, a big tank where well, you've got to buy it, it takes up space. We can look at it and say, well, a water tank full of water, which um, it won't always be, and particularly in the, the summer months. But yeah, a water tank has thermal mass. And so that thermal mass can be useful in the winter time because it can store some of the heat in the day and create a nice microclimate. And so these things have other purposes. But essentially a big water tank in a small garden um, is going to take up a lot of space. And I would always start from the perspective of how can I reduce my need to water? And of course, permaculture has many techniques that we can use. Things like improving the organic matter content of the soil in order to increase water holding capacity. Uh, to use mulching to reduce, reduce evaporation um, and to increase infiltration because, of course, a hot soil will just directly evaporate um, material. Whereas if soil is covered with a mulch, then it keeps the, the soil cool and the water can percolate down through into the soil rather than being pushed out by the warm air coming out of the soil. So um, I look at soil first and then I go up a scale. So when we're talking about Extinction Rebellion, we're talking about national, the national and international scale of things. And it's good, it's very important for us to be taking personal action at home, but it's also important for us to raise the alarm, if you like. It's uh, many of us, if we look at a beehive, okay, I'm going sideways again, but I love to do this. If you look at a beehive, um, if somebody approached, so I did this a few years ago, I approached a beehive that I was unfamiliar with without any protective clothing. And I didn't think I got quite close, you know, really that close, but a, I suddenly found myself being hit on the head with a bee. <laughs> and I got out of there pretty quickly because I took that as a, enough of a warning. And bee colonies are dangerous when instead of just having one bee coming at me at that distance, um, you have they all come at you. So basically it's about what's called response diversity. It's um, some bees will respond more quickly than others and that's good because essentially if I only need one bee to scare me off then one bee is enough for the job. If I continue to get closer then more bees join in and it's the same with us. Some of us get concerned about the climate, are already concerned about the climate and feel that something needs to be done and others of us and not so fast, but it doesn't need all of us to be raising the alarm. And um, what Extinction Rebellion is doing is basically helping the alarm to be raised, putting uh, that big kind of sign up saying, uh, perhaps we should be doing something about this. And in order for that to work really on a global level, we need to be working with governments and such who create rules um, and in systems thinking, Rules and incentives are very powerful. You know, they, um, there was a thing recently about plastic and campaigning against plastics and the fact that so many, I mean, what horrified me is wet wipes have become really popular. I had no idea at all. And that they're really full of plastic. Most of a wet wipe is plastic. And yet the packaging doesn't label wet wipes as having any plastic at all. So... Um, on the TV program, they were just basically writing to the company saying, why don't you put plastic on? And they went and approached them. And the response was basically, 
well, we didn't, you know, we'll do it when EU legislation says we have to do it. So rules and regulations can be very powerful. Some of us um, respond to incentives like uh, it could be a really horrible place to live. <laughs> Food might run out. Um, and perhaps, you know, it's and also it's nice to grow food for ourselves because it's fresher, we're healthier, there's less carbon involved and so on. So different things, different people respond to different things and we need to pitch at all levels. So to come back to summarise, <laughs> what is the difference or the connection, I'd say, between Extinction Rebellion and permaculture? Well, we need to we need to raise the alarm. We need to raise awareness that there is a problem and we need to do something about it. And we need to think ahead rather than be stuck in this. All I care about is today, which I suppose is epitomised in that I'm trying to get to work and this is a bit of an inconvenience, which is um, a little bit, we tend to be aware of things that are happening now rather than things that might happen in the future. Yes, well, it might. Sea levels rise by two or three metres in the next century and London will be underwater, but so what? <laughs> because I won't be here. Um, but right now I'm trying to get to work. So things that happen in the moment tend to draw our attention and be more important, but we need to be thinking bigger picture, longer term. And uh, the Extinction Rebellion movement are trying to raise the alarm. And permaculture fits very nicely with that because permaculture gives us the tools to do something about it because whilst campaigning for change on a global and international national level is very important those things take a lot of moving and needs a lot of people to stand up and say hey let's do something about this to really push that because it's a big um, very difficult to move object whereas uh, the choices we make for ourselves they may seem small but they're really easy because we can just get up tomorrow and say okay now i'm no longer going to X, Y, or Z, you know, buy single-use plastic, whatever it is. So um, Extinction Rebellion is basically raising the alarm. Permaculture gives us the tools. And if you haven't got some permaculture training yet, then it's a really good uh, place to start because it helps to give you, uh, a yes, somewhere to start, somewhere to uh, focus back on ourselves and say, okay, how am I going to change in order to make this whole thing better?